Good morning. This special board meeting on March 24th, 2020 of the Dubuque Community School District is called to order. Roll call, please. Okay, roll call. Ms. Bradley? Present. Mr. Donahue? Present. Ms. Parks? Here. Mr. Prohaska? Here. Ms. Ryan? Here. Mr. Sancy? Here. Ms. Whitman? Here. I move the Board of Education for the agenda is submitted. Second. Second. It has been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the agenda as submitted. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. That motion carries. I move that the Board of Education adopt a resolution appro approving pandemic response and emergency suspension of policies. Second. It has been moved and seconded that the Board of Education adopt a resolution approving pandemic response and emergency suspension of policies. Discussion. Do you want to explain what so this is? So basically the uh, IASB is recommending or at least suggesting that uh, boards take this action. I know many have, but it basically gives some greater flexibility with the execution of policies uh, during this time when we don't want to necessarily pull full board meetings back together. So it's just really a, a social distancing piece. Uh, so a, a prime example would be uh, we have a warehouse that has uh, <clears throat> many thousands of gloves, uh, rubber gloves in them. We'd like to donate uh, some of those to local hospitals who are in need. Uh, and so that would be a decision that would be able to come through uh, the administrative team through myself will inform the board, but we wouldn't have to pull the board together to do that. So it will be used very sparingly, but just when we have those types of things that are in response, direct response to the pandemic, that we could make those decisions and move on without uh, needing to do the, a, a full board meeting and some of the risks that are associated with that. Okay. Jenny, you want me to read the whole thing? Hey, hey Dan. Yeah. Uh, so would it be, I'm sure I know the answer to this, but. Uh, assume that Liz, if you would invoke that, that uh, granted you wouldn't need to pull it together, but you would be letting us know when you use those powers and authorities. Absolutely. So we would always be transparent about that with the board as well as with the press and, and the community. It's, you know, it's not declaring martial law. Um, <laughs> Just uh, right. we, we would clearly keep you updated so that the board would know and, and uh, you know, have the ability to, to you know, express their opinion if they would need to, yeah. And it would be for a temporary period of time. Yeah. Okay. It was my understanding that the motion was going to be to um, suspend those policies necessary to implement the COVID guidelines and Yada, yada, yada. Correct. Not that all policies are correct. suspended. Correct. That's correct. It's just so. I didn't hear that in the motion. Well, I haven't read that. It's just the. She's she got to read the motion now. The resolution. Okay. I'm going to read the resolution that's part of the motion. So we have a motion in a second. And I'll read the resolution and then call for a vote. Whereas Iowa Code Chapter 279.8 authorizes local school boards to govern their respective districts, including adopting policies for their own governance, and whereas the board may, by formal action, suspend or rescind board policy as deemed necessary, appropriate, or in the best interest of the district, and whereas on March 11, 2020, the World Health Organization characterized COVID-19 as a pandemic, and whereas on March 13, 2020, the President of the, United of the United States declared a national state of emergency, and on March 15, 2020, Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds recommended closure of all public and private K-12 schools in Iowa until April 13, 2020 to contain the spread of COVID-19, and Whereas on March 17, 2020, Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds declared a state of public health disaster emergency under the authority granted through Iowa Constitution, um, 
Articles. Four. Four. Subsection. Section 1-8 in Iowa Code Section 29C. 61135.1406 and 135.144 and directed implementation of the Iowa Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Management's Iowa Emergency Response Plan in response to the novel coronavirus COVID-19 and whereas most hourly non-exempt employees will be unable to report to work due to the district's closure and certified contract employees may be asked to work at remote locations to help provide continuity in educational services. And whereas on March 17, 2020, the Iowa legislature passed and the governor signed SF 2409 granting waiver of the instructional time requirements in Iowa Code Chapter 279.2 one zero for all public school districts closing before April 12th, 2020 in order to prevent or contain the spread of COVID-19 and granting Governor Reynolds the ability to waive instructional time requirements for any public school district which closes on or after April 12th, 2020 to prevent or contain the spread of COVID-19. And whereas the Iowa Department of Education which has the authority to establish and interpret graduation requirements and to oversee other crucial aspects of public education is providing written guidance to Iowa school districts on issues related to COVID-19, including but not limited to student attendance, distance online learning, high school credit, meal distribution, and other issues. And now, there be it resolved that Dubuque Community School District Board of Education hereby suspends provisions of its board policies and or whole policies as identified by the district superintendent or designee if such suspension is necessary to implement written guidance from state or federal agencies relating to containing COVID-19 for the duration identified in the governor's state of public health emergency declaration on March 17, 2020, or as otherwise determined by the board. Be it further resolved that the district superintendent will consult with and report to the board as feasible and appropriate regarding the emergency closure and efforts to implement written guidance from health and government agencies. Be it further resolved that the district superintendent is authorized to close any school facility without further action by the Board of Education. Such closure shall continue during the emergency created by the COVID-19 pandemic until such time as the superintendent, in consultation with the appropriate health and government authorities, deems it in the best interest of the district and its students to open schools. Be it further resolved that the district superintendent is authorized, based upon the needs of the district and guidance from health and government agencies, to direct staff assignments during district closures, including, but not limited to, essential employees who must report to work, employees who may be reassigned, and employees whose services are not needed. Be it further resolved that access to public school grounds and public school buildings of the district may be limited as directed by the superintendent during district closures. Be it further resolved that the district superintendent or designee is authorized to donate medical supplies or other items owned by the district and deemed necessary by healthcare facilities in COVID-19 response efforts. Be it further resolved that in the interest of public health and or to comply with federal or state health department recommendations or guidance, the board may limit the number of people who can physically attend board meetings and may instead encourage the public to attend or listen to its open public meetings via telephone or video conference, live streaming on television and or the internet. And the board may also limit pu public comment to written comments. Be it further resolved that the board reserves the right to adjust board meeting dates, times, and locations during the district-wide emergency closure in a matter consistent with the open meetings law and notes that any or all board members may attend board meetings electronically as permitted by law. Be it further resolved 
that execution of this resolution is conclusive evidence of the board's approval of this action and of the authority granted herein. The board warrants that it has, and at the time of this action had, full power and lawful authority to adopt this instrument. This resolution will remain in full force and effective until it is rescinded or amended by subsequent action of the board. Adopted and to be approved on this 24th day of March 2020. Are there any questions? Uh, yes, I believe that the motion should not be to rescind all policies. I believe that the motion should be to adopt the resolution as you have just read. We don't need to rescind all policies. We need it does not. The the motion was that the Board of Education adopted a resolution, which she just read. Okay. The approving pandemic response and emergency suspension of policy. That is yep. Okay. My mistake. Thanks, Mike. Yep. Could I ask for a rereading of the motion then, as it was stated? The rereading of the motion is uh, that the Board of Education adopt a resolution approving pandemic response and emergency suspension of policies. Okay, my mistake. Thanks, Mike. I have no All those in favor? Do you want to roll call? Roll, okay, roll call vote, please. Ms. Bradley? Aye. Mr. Donahue? Aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Prohaska? Aye. Ms. Ryan? Aye. Mr. Sancy? Aye. Ms. Whitman? Aye. That motion is approved. Are there any other items? So I guess just to, to reiterate, as Mike had asked earlier, and I think Nancy was, was asking, you know, we, we are asking for this resolution initially because of the paragraph that has to do with donation of supplies, as we uh, have some supplies we'd like to donate to, to our local hospitals and, and uh, caregivers. And there are other things in there about buildings and, and work assignments and as was asked or requested. We will certainly keep the board uh, up to date. In fact, you'll know about those things before we share them publicly. So um, it is not all policies. It is pretty specific to things we might need to do in, in response to the uh, pandemic. I have, yeah. this is Lisa, I have one question or comment um, where it talks about Governor Reynolds' ability to waive instructional time requirements for any public district which closes on or ends for April 12, 2020. Um, so far today, we do not know what's going to happen. You know, we were going to open up April 13th and we're still at kind of our target date. Yes, if that's your question, right? yes. So obviously, um, that's about three weeks away. It's three weeks from yesterday. So we would assume that we'll learn a lot about the progression of, of COVID-19 in the next couple of weeks. And, and I'm sure there'll be other, uh, a lot more information coming and other decisions may or may not be made. But currently, we're operating on the April 13th uh, assumption. But again, that could change at any time. Thank you. Okay. Hey, uh, this, uh, this is Jim. I, I'd like to just uh, pass off something here. Yesterday I ventured out, stayed in my car, drove down to Prescott, also out of Hempstead, and I saw the uh, uh, grab and go lunch uh, programs. First of all, I want to compliment whoever organized that. It looked like it was very well organized, good signage. And uh, thanks to all those people that were involved. I know Stan were highly involved in it. Thanks to all those people that were involved in that uh, program. Uh, it looked very, very well organized. Yeah, our food service, I, I can't take any credit for that. Our food service folks uh, did a great job of not only uh, organizing our site, but coordinating with others to make sure that there was wide distribution around the city. So uh, I did work smoothly, and we're appreciative of the work that they've done. And, now you'll be sustaining that for the duration. Yes. 
Do we know, Stan, how many meals were actually distributed? We, we don't. We know that at our site, a total of about 700 meals were distributed um, between lunches and the breakfast. I don't know. I know Jackie knows, and she's not in the room. How many were were given out by the community partners, the Boys and Girls Club, the Dream Center, and <clears throat> rooted, which is through Convivium. So I don't have a total number yet, but we will get that number. But our two sites distributed about 700. I believe that's the number. Yes, and we expect that to grow. Quite honestly, I think our number sure. of Wednesday or Thursday is probably the number we'll start to stabilize at as people become more and more aware of the process. So. I think uh, we'll keep tracking that, but I, I think maybe, you know, Thursday or so might be a good gauge as to where we'll sort of plateau at. Uh -huh. 700 is a very good start, I would say. It's a good start, absolutely. Okay, if there's no other issues, uh, this meeting is adjourned.